Hi, I'm KDJTV, and welcome to Jackass. Just kidding, this is Whiteboard Wednesday. It's the YouTube series about MLB The Show that features no gameplay. MLB The Show, of course, sometimes feels like a jackass skit. Cause no matter how many times we get kicked or punched in the nuts, we keep coming back for more for the laughs. That intro, however fun it was, was largely irrelevant to what we're about to talk about today. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to Whiteboard Wednesday, you are in for a treat. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe before you go. We're on the road to 2,000 subscribers. We're getting closer every day, and you can help me get there. I get questions a lot, sometimes on Twitch, sometimes on YouTube, sometimes in other places, about how I would build my ideal hitter card, or what attributes I care about most. Those are really the questions that come up. So today I figured I would go through the attributes that appear on a position player card, a hitter card, and go through the ones that don't matter, matter a little, matter a lot, and matter the most. I've broken them down into four categories for you, just so you can get an idea of what I'm looking for when I'm assessing whether a card is going to fit on my God Squad or not. Again, a disclaimer, you can build your team however you like. Your attribute breakdown might be different than mine. It probably is. Everybody values players and the game a little bit differently, but for me, as someone who considers himself semi-competitive at the game, this is what I'm looking for. And we begin in the attributes that don't matter category. We start off with discipline. Discipline is largely, entirely, an offline statistic. It has nothing to do with Diamond Dynasty online or offline gameplay. If you, the user, are using a card, discipline don't matter. I also do not even look at bunt or drag bunt when filling out a lineup card. It just doesn't matter to me. If I really have to bunt, and it's a dire situation, you can pretty much bunt with just about anyone. Sure, bunting with Hannes Wagner is easier than, say, I don't know, David Ortiz, but you can get the bunt down. It's not a big deal. Also, stop bunting. You should never bunt. Don't do it. And lastly, when filling out a lineup card, I do not care about durability Asterisk, because if I'm using the durability captain boost, no shit, of course I care about durability. But on a normal team, durability doesn't actually mean anything. It's really just another, like, franchise attribute that only makes sense when you're doing season-long simulations and things like that. But when we're talking about the ability to put a captain boost on, then of course durability matters. The durability boost is also arguably the best boost in the game, and that's why Cal Ripken Jr.'s captain card is like 150k. It's, it's through the roof. Next up, we're moving on to the attributes that matter just a little. They definitely don't not matter. Don't not matter. But they definitely matter a smidge. We start with arm accuracy. For me, arm accuracy, of course, is helpful. Higher arm accuracy means it will be easier to throw the ball. But ultimately, it's user input. It comes down to you. If you feel as if you are good with the throwing meter, then arm accuracy really should not hamper your ability to throw runners out. It's as simple as that. Arm accuracy in the past literally didn't matter at all. Now it certainly matters more. And for you, this might be more important. If you're someone who struggles in the field making throws, you might put this one up another category. But for me, I think arm accuracy falls into the matters just a little bit category. Then we move on to stealing and base running aggressiveness. And I know these are going to be the two semi-controversial ones on this list because a lot of you fellas love to steal, and it really grinds my gears when all you do is steal. Stealing's fine situationally, I'm not against stealing on the whole, but some of you people run rampant. The reason I do not care about the steal rating is because, you guessed it, I don't steal. I don't really create a lineup based around stealing. Of course, I do have at least one person on the bench at all times with 99 speed, 99 steal, and 99 base running aggressiveness. I think every person playing this game should build a bench that helps cover for weaknesses in your lineup. And you might fall into a situation in the 8th or ninth inning where you really desperately need a runner to score, and you gotta put the speed on the bases. So that's what I have. But I also don't think that means it matters a lot, because it doesn't impact the entirety of my roster construction. It's just one spot. And yeah, base running aggressiveness certainly helps in how your hitters, how your batters turn the corners and run bases and progress from first to third and second to home and things like that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to stop using Juan Soto because he's not a good base runner. You know, he's Juan Soto. He can put the ball over the fence. Base running aggressiveness doesn't matter if you're smacking ding-dongs. And lastly, I put Vision here with another asterisk. We did a whole video on this channel in this series even, about what vision is, what it means, and why a lot of people were upset about the Aaron Judge Lightning card. I recognize wholeheartedly 
that in that video, I did say that vision matters. It does. But vision matters more for some people than it does for others. So that's one reason we have an asterisk there. But the second reason I have the asterisk there is because I think the importance of vision is swing dependent. It has everything to do with how you do with someone's swing. For example, Aaron Judge with low vision, for me, personally, that's rough. Because I don't like Aaron Judge's swing. But if we get a Cody Bellinger that has kind of low vision, first of all, I'd be disappointed. But second of all, I I'm rake with Cody Bellinger. His swing does not bother me in any way, shape, or form, so I would not mind the vision as much. Vision is swing dependent. It could matter a lot, it could matter a little. I'm choosing to put it here. I had a hard time trying to decipher, for me, which attributes fell into matters a lot and matters most. I think I've come up with it, and let me explain how. We're actually going to start from the bottom here. So arm strength matters because you got to be able to throw people out from the outfield, especially with the way perfect, perfect relays are, but especially with the way that somehow fielders, especially on relays, don't always get rid of the ball as quick as you'd like them to. Sometimes it's lightning fast, sometimes it's super slow. It's all dependent on what the game's RNG tells it to do at that current moment. But the best way to make up for having some RNG issues is to just bypass the cutoff man and throw a seed straight to the base. Arm strength, to me, matters more than arm accuracy because I can control the accuracy. I cannot control the strength of the throw. So with that being the case, I want to make sure I'm really emphasizing arm strength. Next up is the fielding rating. A fielding rating that falls below a gold is not necessarily going to deter me from using a player. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is my first baseman. It, of course, will vary based on what position these people are playing. I'm not trying to put a silver fielder and center fielder shortstop, for example. But at the same time, the fielding rating is trumped by reaction, which is trumped by speed. And as you can see, speed is not here. That's because it's on the next slide, so to speak. Reaction means a ton especially at positions that are asked to make athletic plays. It means a little less at first and third. It means a little less at catcher. It means a ton in the outfield. It means a ton at second and short. Reaction, for those who don't understand, is just your fielder's ability to move as soon as the ball is hit. It's how your outfielders can chase down balls in the gaps, chase down balls over their heads, come in and make a sliding catch, for example. For your shortstop and second baseman, it's how well they adjust to balls hit in the hole. Reaction is just how well your fielders react. And in my opinion, I think that's more important than your fielding attribute because fielding is all kind of based on RNG to some degree anyway. There are a lot of times where common fielders make the same diving athletic plays as diamond fielders. Of course, there's a lesser chance of it happening, but it still does. So for me, I'd rather play with reaction, where my player is ensured a better jump to a ball, as opposed to a fielding rating that can sometimes just mean nothing. And we're down to what matters most, and again, we're going to start from the bottom. The reason speed as a rating is so important is because, to my recollection, I'm pretty sure I'm correct here, Speed is the only thing that impacts you at the plate, kind of, so to speak, and in the field. It is pivotal to putting together an all-encompassing great player. Speed is going to help you beat out infield hits. It's going to help you go first to third. It's going to help you to go second to home. If you like to steal bases, it's going to help you steal. If you're in the field, it's going to help you track down balls. That can overcome bad reaction. It can overcome bad fielding. Why are shortstops at a position in center field sometimes really viable options in modes like BR or events or maybe even ranked? It's because they have crazy good speed. It makes up for so much. It's not a cheat code, but it, sometimes it kind of feels like cheating. What is the number one complaint we get about cards that have outfield as a primary position? Oh, but they tanked the speed. The speed means a lot. If your center fielder doesn't have above, like, 70 speed, you're basically relegating him to a corner. And if your corner outfielder can't even get over 50 speed, you're basically a DH. And if your DH spot is full, sayonara. And now we'll go back to the top. This year, SDS has placed such a heavy influence on the clutch rating, which is cool because it basically did nothing before, that clutch is one of the biggest backbreakers on a card if it sucks. If you look at a really cool card, you're like, yes, I love this card, and then you continue down the attribute path and you see 98 clutch, you're very upset. I think clutch is most important for players coming off your bench. I essentially think your entire bench should be at least 120 clutch. Give yourself the best chance to succeed, especially when bench players are now used very specific situations with the DH being in the game. Your entire bench needs to be max clutch. Most of your lineup should be max clutch. At this point in the year, we have so many crazy cards, they're out there. 
they exist. Don't handicap yourself by putting in someone with 97 clutch. And then we're going to do these next two, these final two, in order of importance to me. I think contact is more important than power. Yes, power is what drives this game. I don't want anyone to get confused. I'm not out here advocating for people to use max contact 47 power Lubrock all the time. All I'm saying is that I would rather have a player with max contact and 100 power than 100 contact and max power. That's just my personal preference. Hitting the ball in MLB The Show is exceedingly difficult. If you get to Hall of Fame and Legend, it's difficulter. Might as well give yourself the best chance to succeed. Give yourself players with high contact ratings, make that PCI nice and big, improve your chances of putting the bat on the ball, and the power will come. There's a reason we say often the guy plays above his power. Because power can kind of be generated to some degree by swing, launch angle, how you strike the ball. No one plays above their contact level, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. That's why, to me, contact is the most important of those two stats. Now, which attributes do you attribute to your success? Notice how I use the same word there, but in two different ways. That's how languages work. I'm curious to hear in the comments what you think about my breakdown and where you disagree. Because, like I said, everybody plays this game differently, everybody has different thoughts, everyone values different things. What do you disagree on? Can we at least have a nice civil discussion about it? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe before you go. Love you all. See you next time. Also, this video featured trained professionals on a closed course. Please do not try any of these things at home or you will probably die.